Hello, my name is Ishbin Bryan, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to take a face and put it onto any type of moving object, like this apple, for instance. Whether your camera's moving or your object is moving, this method is possible. This is a part two of a two-part series, so if you don't know how to cut out the face yet, watch my first video, I'll put it up right here. So you can watch that first, and then we go into how to actually put that face onto a moving object. If you like what you see, please comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell thing so I can get paid. Nah, I don't get paid. But that way I know to make more videos like this in the future for people who are wanting to learn After Effects or Adobe or anything like that. So uh, let's jump right into it. All right, so once you are in Adobe After Effects, it doesn't matter what version it is, this should work for every version that uh, you can possibly have right now. So go ahead and Drop your footage layer inside of your timeline, which is what you're going to be putting your face onto. I'm gonna to try to put it on the side of this car and then make sure you bring in your face layer um, that you're gonna cut out. So what we're gonna do is check this footage and make sure it's trackable first. Um, so with this footage layer selected here, we are gonna to go to the effects and presets uh, panel over here and type in 3D camera tracker. Uh, there it is right there and I can just drag and drop that onto our footage layer. Um, it's trying to find points that you can track. When you do film this, make sure you are filming with a relatively higher quality camera. A phone will work, um, but if you're filming on like a Nintendo DS, it's not gonna pick up any tracker points. You need detail um, because it's gonna be looking for points that stay visible the entire time that the camera and the AI can follow. Once this number hits 100, it's gonna start solving your camera and it's going, to, it's going to finish once you see these little trackers here. And I can scrub through and see which points stay for a majority of the time. If I hit play, um, you won't see them, but when I scrub, I can see that the ones on the wheel stay longer. If I go to the left side, I can increase my tracker points by dragging this track point size to the right so I can see them a little bit better. I can bring down my target size um, just so I can get a feel of um, what I'm tracking. So it looks like I'm going to be tracking this wheel mostly because they stay in the frame the entire time and that helps a lot. So now what I'm going to do is grab some points to track. The more you can include in this the better. So if I left click and drag I'm going to select all of these points here and what it does is set a target and that's going to be the angle of my face. So I'm going to right click create null and camera. And what that's gonna do is create a null object that is basically suctioned onto here that you do not see. And then a 3D camera, um, because this is gonna be the 3D space that we're dealing with. Great, so our footage layer is tracked. It's looking great. If you accidentally click out of the footage layer, um, if you click in it again, you can't see the tracker points, but if you go up to 3D camera tracker over here under effects controls, you click it, they'll appear again. So now what we're gonna do is go to our face layer, and I'm just gonna bring that above my footage layer so you can kinda of see what I'm dealing with here. It's me disgustingly eating popcorn. I'm gonna do a time lapse here just so you can see me cutting out my mouth, but um, if you wanna know how to do this for beginners or further detail, uh, watch the first video. I find this really hard to do with facial hair, so if you have a subject that has a clean shaven face, it makes the mask a little bit more smooth when you're putting it onto your object. All right, now that my mouth is cut out, I am just going to feather it a little bit. So I'm gonna go down to my face layer with the little drop down arrow, go to masks and then mask one and under mask feather, this first zero, I'm just gonna left click and drag to the right. So it feathers it a, lot, a little bit, it'll blend it. And there we go. I'm gonna undo my arrow so I can see this um, right here. If you look, it's not tracked to anything when I scrub through, and that's not what we want. So what we do want is this to be tracked to, say, the side of the car. We'll put it over here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my cursor arrow, again, my selection tool. Um, over here, on the right side, there you see these little empty boxes next to the face footage. If I click on the one that looks like a little cube, under the 3D layer, I can click that. It's gonna turn our mouth into a 3D layer at that point. If I drag through, you can see it sticks. Look at that. Pretty neat stuff. Um, in order to move this though and to shrink it, um, all I have to do is drag these different arrows. So you can see here's my X, here's my Y, here's my Z. These are moving them in 3D space. So if I left click, hold it down, drag on the X, I can move it this way. 
and then if I want to move it up and down, I just have to drag on the on the Y's, and then Z will go back and forth. Um, if I want to do that very precisely, if I go down to the drop down arrow next to face layer here, uh, I'm just gonna you know close up the mask here. If I go to transform under position, you have different numbers now. There's three different sets of numbers. These are all um, X, Y, and Z. So if I play around with this first set of numbers, I'm holding down the left mouse and dragging. That's moving it on the X axis, just like we were doing here. And then the second set of numbers is moving it up and down the Y axis. And the third set is moving it back towards um, the car or bringing it towards the camera here. Um, that's just one way to be more precise with it. Um, I do want to see what this looks like if I just move it like this. Looks pretty good. I do want to change the scale though, so that's a problem. Um, you could scale it X, Y, and Z under here. It's a little more complicated. I just grab by the bottom left corner, and if you look, this is not proportionally um, moving anything. So if I hold down Shift, it'll you know, keep the scale proportionate. So I'm just holding down shift and my left mouse click um, to bring it to the size I want. And then I can adjust the Y, X, and Z here. Let's see if it stays on the door now. Um, it's a little bit in front of the door. So you can see it's kind of moving around. So we do need to bring it closer to the car by moving it back on the Z axis and move it on the X. Um, there we go. It's a little bit better. We just got to get it to stick really close. Let's see how close we can get it. That looks pretty good right there. Um, so now if I just play this back, you see my mouth is stuck to the car door. Um, of course, this is like a really shiny surface, so this makes it a little more difficult, but if you have something super detailed, um, it will help a lot. Um, so now if you combine what you learned in the first tutorial and add it to this tutorial, you'll be able to put a face on a moving object. So we have our mouth set. Um, say we wanted to add the eyes. Um, since we did all that work already, all we have to do is minimize this uh, face layer. All I have to do is duplicate it. So Control D to duplicate your layer while oh, you have it selected. And maybe I want to do some eyes next. So let me go over here to my eyes. So what I'm doing is um, dragging the mask that I made around my mouth and just re-dragging it around my eyes. And I don't need all these points at this point, so I'm just going to delete some of them just so I surround my eye like this. It doesn't have to be precise because it's feathered. Uh, there we go. So now we have an eye, and we can we can move that anywhere we want now too. Uh, let's see. There we go. So let's say I want to put my eye over here on this side of the car. There we go. Um, looks pretty good for the most part. There we go. So you can place it wherever you want. Of course, it's a little shaky because my face was moving a lot, but for the most part, it's staying. Um, proportionate while we're dollying out. Uh, pretty neat stuff. So let's go ahead and fine-tune this um, and see how precise we can make this. So I'm just gonna bring this down and we can do exactly what we did in the first tutorial and maybe change this to pink. So let's take our effects presets panel over here, type in tint, drag the tint on the face layer, which is the bottom one at this point, yeah automatically goes black and white, change the white, the top left under tint in your effects controls to a pinkish color to kind of uh, match it a little bit more here. And you can see how much tint you want to add. Maybe it's just a little bit so it kind of sticks there. Uh, there we go, we added a little bit of tint to that. If I wanted to do the tint to the other eye, I can just grab the tint from my first layer here copy um, and go to my other layer which I'm going to rename to I so you can tell the difference and all I'm going to do is control V paste the tint onto there as well um, so it blends a little bit better there um, of course with a more detailed object it would stick a lot better um, and now I'm just going to do time lapse of me cleaning this up Beautiful mouth. <laughs> it's disgusting. You get the picture. If I do want the inside of my mouth not to be tinted pink, um, I showed this in my first tutorial. All I have to do is duplicate the face layer 
on top of that same one we just did. Turn off all of the effects. And then I'm going to actually delete the mask and make a mask on the inside of my mouth. All this yellow buttery popcorn, yum. And then I would go to masks, mask one, feather a little bit, and then I would follow my footage with the mask. But this is all explained to my first tutorial, so go ahead and check that out if you have not already. This is a little bit more advanced, but it really doesn't take much longer um, to do. Thanks for watching my video, everyone. Try this on a bunch of different objects, whether it's on your hand, on your face, on a car, you name it. Have fun with it. Please comment, like, subscribe so I can make more videos like this, and uh, we'll see you later. I just did that for the video. I had to do it. I don't chew with my mouth open, by the way.